This is Redhead Tech. Your resource for engaging students in learning. Hello and welcome to Redhead Tech. Today we're going to talk about how to set up a Kahoot game and I'm going to show you how to do it step by step. So what I'd like you to do is uh, you can go to redheadtech.com and there you'll be able to go to the blog, go to technology tools, and when you scroll down there are two different ones. The one on the left here, 10 quick steps to set up and play Kahoot. We'll go over the steps we're going to do today. And the one on the right, Gaming in the Classroom, tells you why to do it and what is it about the game that makes the kids really like it. Okay, so we're going to go here just to show you an overview of your 10 steps. You're going to set up your account. You can get a free account. It's easy. And then you're going to search by topic. Then you'll filter by subject and level. There are more filters you can use, which I always do, because you want to get the right game for your kids. Then you're going to sort it again. You'll review which game you like and then duplicate it and then play it. It's really that easy. You can also edit the game and make it more specific to what you would like for your students if you need. That'll be up to you to decide. So let's go ahead. We're going to go up here, open a new tab. We're going to go to Kahoot. Dot com. And you're going to want to go ahead and log in if you have an account or hit sign up. We're just going to log in. So I just went ahead and signed in and this is the new page they show you. Uh, they're trying to get people to pay for it. You don't have to pay for it. Just click thanks, maybe later. Okay, so right now I'm going to do a Kahoot about, um, let's do the one that goes with what we did in the blog post. So we're going to do story elements. Okay, I like my screen a little bigger. So I will hit Control plus, make it a little bigger, that's a little better, okay. So you can see right now, I have 61,000 results. Well, that's a lot, right? Don't really need 61,000 results. So what we're going to do is we're going to filter, okay? So we're going to go up here to subject and we're going to filter by language arts and story elements to me as an English teacher means I'm going to do literature and drama. Click apply. Then I'm going to go to level. Now I teach high school English, but I teach it to kids who are struggling with reading. So I need something that's a lower grade level. So I'm actually going to uh, click grade five, six, and seven. Um, that's probably about the right reading level. It has the basic elements and standards that we need. I'm going to hit apply. Now you can see it's a whole lot better now. We've gotten it down to 1,600 results. Big difference, right? Okay, we can do that. All right, so now I like to go to more filters. Uh, since I'm a teacher, I know teachers have a lot of training, so I'm going to click on one that's been created by teachers. 
created for schools. And I tend to use the quizzes. That's just uh, what I'm going to show you today. Uh, and we're going to do it in English. Hit apply. And you can see it actually did not really change the results a whole lot. So now we have 1,602. <laughs> so that's OK. So some of the things you want to look for next is we want to figure out, well, how, how do I decide if it's a good game or not? Um, we can go over here to most relevant. Um, or you could do most played or highest quality. I tend to go with most played because if a teacher likes it, they're probably going to do it with five of their classes. And so it'll get played over and over again. And they're going to tell their colleagues about it and they're going to use it also. And they might refine it and make it better. So now we have it sorted by um, the most played. And if you look over here, you can see 6,000 plays right here, 2,000 plays. OK, that's one way we can look at it. And um, another thing that I look at is I'm going to scroll down here and just look at the pictures on the left side. And that'll tell me a little bit about story elements. And since I'm working with high school kids, I really don't want anything that's going to be very young looking. Uh, also, here's a sample question. They're talking about minions. I don't want anything about minions in, for this particular group. They're ninth graders. so. Um, OK, so here's something in the modern world, something that could happen that could be a stretch. Uh, this one actually looks pretty good because it has man versus man. So now I know it has conflict. And mm, here's another one I like. Uh, this one has a struggle between two opposing forces. So, you know, and I like that it has the picture of the plot diagram because that's something I use. And then I look over here and it has 541 plays. So that looks like a pretty good one. Let's go ahead and try that. So if I'm going to play this game, what I usually do, because if I don't do this, I might forget to do it later. So I'm going to click on the game. OK. And I usually the first thing I do is I go over here to the dots and I'm going to click duplicate. And by duplicating it, it automatically goes into my cahoots. And you can see right here, it's listed in my cahoots now. It shows that I have 89, OK? Um, and it's right here at the very top, OK? So if I want to play it, I literally can just go right now. I click on Play. OK, here we go. So from this area here, you're going to hit Classic. And you're going to hear the music come on in just a second. The students love the music. So I usually have that going. Uh, there's a lot of activity while the kids start signing in. The kids are going to very simply go right here to um, kahoot.it in their web browser, or they might have the app on their phone if you let them use their phone. Once they get in, it just asks them for the number of the game. They put that in. They don't need to put their name uh, or any identifying information into Kahoot. It doesn't really save it, so it's a very safe place for games uh, for kids to play. 
once everyone's in, you're going to go ahead and click Start. And that's it. So we're going to pretend like the game is starting. We're going to finish out this video right now. And I'll record a separate one to show you uh, different stages of the game and how it works and the different options you have. But I hope you find that finding a Kahoot game is really easy. Uh, and really, you just take a second, you get online. Really, within five minutes, you can be playing. Even if you don't know it well, the kids are so excited to play it. And I mean, I'm talking my students are 14 to 17, 18 years old, and they love to play this game. So uh, I think they'll love it. And you're going to learn about what they are able to do and what they can't do. And it'll be a really engaging lesson for your kids. So I hope you enjoyed this. And if you want to see the next steps, just uh, look for it in my playlist. And we'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us on Redhead Tech.